important the most important aspect is to just take the most rigorous courses that your board has to offer and score well in them right at the end of the day it won't matter if it's a ib cbse icse cambridge right it won't matter as long as you're challenging yourself in class taking the best and the most hard courses and scoring well in them right and on mr on your point on ap board i think ap board if you're looking just for us ap board is perfect because then you know what happens children from ib cbse icsc end up taking ap classes just to show Correct. to Very universities good. that you know we are comfortable in the ap board in the us curriculum but if you're already in the ap board i think you're good to go yeah, you're yeah. already accustomed to how the us education system will work so that's perfectly fine but depending on these four boards just you know take the most rigorous classes and score well in them is what we think is the best Yeah, and also, if your child is excelling in that school, then definitely don't change them, right? Because they, you have to be at the top of that school anyway. So as long as the child is doing well, they're happy. Uh, don't change them. That's our suggestion. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Like we spoke about, academics is the core, Chaitanya. But extracurriculars is again a huge part of the process, especially again in the US, right? Uh, so of course, when we talk about extracurriculars, not just about the activity list that you create, the ten items that you have to put there. It's about you know what all have you done and the impact that you've created, right? So even if you've done a few projects, but they've had great impact, that stands out to admissions yeah. officers. Right? So just adding on to our previous point at this point, it's like you know when we talked about academics, U.S. universities or any university, you know U.S. or Can Canadian university specifically actually. are not asking you to score 100% in your academics right they would prefer a child who has let's say 94 95% but has impactful extra curriculars in the field that they want to go right they're more likely to choose a student who has you know in the top 5% not perfect grades but has great extra curriculars compared to a student who has 100% marks but has no extra curriculars or nothing to show outside the class so that's a great you know a good point that we should focus on and what kind of extra curricular style do you think students should get into or what type how 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 does a student choose their extra curricular yeah so of course chaitanya you know athena we want our scholars to do only things yeah. that they're passionate about so that's why we spend a lot of time for understanding the passion and interest of the child and then we make a strategic road back a road map specific for that child right so for example if the kid is a stem student right so then obviously and they want to study cs yeah. so then obviously we will recommend that they go ahead with building an app of course in the interest area that they want right so then of course with the help of our tech mentor we're able to build that app and obviously the number of times that app is downloaded and used is obviously then going to be that tangible outcome so, of the success of that project so an extra curricular activity has to show impact right at how many lives you can you know impact if you, for example a kid is interested in cs how can we use cs and social service or any social uh, topic that the child is actually very passionate about how do we combine those two areas together and create impact in society and by impact i don't mean you know impacting 1000 lives or 10000 lives even if you can impact 20 lives in your own community that's a good enough impact and that gets you external validation so these colleges want to see that the extra curriculars you're doing are a combination of your varied interests you know not just cs but how do you combine cs with let's say psychology or art or music you know cs plus music plus how do you create you know impact society using cs plus music so that's how you build your extra curriculars how you build your so called road map down the line and right and get external validation and impact so those two words impact and external validation we use them a lot because they are the most important things you should have in your extra curriculars right yeah i think great point chadanya about obviously complementing different yeah. passions of yours so computer science and music of course like you said and of course we had one student called mehul who yeah. combined his interest of computer science with scrabble and he built an app yeah. that taught english to underprivileged kids so yeah. he had all three pillars yeah and it had over 1000 you know plays to download and that of course got him to stanford, stanford now yeah but you know it's just how you combine your various interests right. and use it to like i said again impact uh yes miss shah we will get to q and a but uh, if you could uh, please be on mute for now unless you have a specific question for now and 
the Adam you move on. All right, the big debate, where to send your child? I mean, of course, uh, you know, that's a personal decision. But yes, US, UK and Canada still till this date are the most preferred countries for sure in that order specifically. Uh, so again, it really depends on what your child wants. And of course, we've, I think, been through the different uh, curriculums and of course, the difference between I think we should uh, break this down into how US, UK, Canada looks different applicants from ninth or 10th grade onwards. So what, you know, right. so specifically the US, right? US looks at all four years from grade 9, 10th, 11th and 12th. They want to see an upward trajectory in terms of grades, in terms of extracurriculars, in terms of any activity that you're doing in class, there should be an upward and positive trajectory. Even if you're like in the top 5%, they want you to be constant, not, you know, come down in top 10% or something like that. That's what US is in terms of both academics and extracurricular, right? But for you, yes, I would you. Yes, uh, so like obviously we talked about. Hey, Cesar, how are you, man? How, good afternoon. Good. How's it going? Good, good, good. So far, all good, all good. So, uh, about the payment, quick, quick one, just to, to let you know. So, Steve has not been uh, approved, but however, Steve, of course, is just uh, sleeping now. Who's the story? Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, sorry about you. Uh, yes, sorry about that. Uh, yes, uh, of course, US 9 to 12 matter. Uh, all four grades matter. But for UK specifically, they do look at your 10th boards and your 12th boards, you know, more strategically. And of course, with UK, you do get conditional offers as well. So you have to get those certain grades in grade 12 to even qualify for that final offer. Whereas in US, your predicted scores in grade 12 are good enough to get you admission into the university. So your admission is secured even before you actually give your 12th exam, right? So that's again, uh, one thing for you guys to be aware of, right? And of course, Canada is similar to UK, wherein again, the boards are mattered or at least hold a more high weightage than- Sort, of, sort of mix of both US and uh, UK, but giving a little more importance to grades is what Canada is. Yes. And of course, we all know for the US, uh, the SAT or the ACT is another standout test that will help you make yeah. your mark as well. And in terms of subject choice, Sal, what do you think? How do you differentiate US, UK in terms of what you can study and how do you choose your major? Yes. So that's the biggest thing for you guys to consider. If your child is so certain that by the end of their grade 12, they know exactly what they want to study, then of course the UK, like India, is a three-year rigid bachelor's degree. So what you sign up for is what you will do. There is no chance of, you know, flexibility or changing the course once yeah. you're there. Whereas in the US, you have so many majors yeah. to choose from. So in US, you can apply to colleges undeclared, right? Yes. See, we want to make sure students do academic exploration, look at what they're actually interested in, and then take the, take, take up that subject in grade 11 or 12. But if they're still not sure and they still want to explore, U.S. gives you that flexibility of going undeclared to a college and, you know, study anything you want from dance classes to CS to physics to arts to humanities, anything you want for the first two years. And then in the second year, declare your major that you will finally get a degree in, right? So that's a huge difference between U.S. and U.K. U.K., you'll be stuck with one major, very academic focused. U.S., it has a very holistic process, right? It gives you flexibility of switching majors, of, uh, you know, dabbling in different subject areas and just exploring yourself yeah. more in depth. And also in the US, you can do double majors, uh, triple majors. I wouldn't recommend triple majors, but there are people who do triple majors. But yes, definitely double majors and doing minors in different schools as well, right? So again, that's an added benefit of the US where you can complement your subjects with different areas and different departments. Got it. So I think we've covered yeah, mostly of UK, US, Canada. We can take up Q and A later. All right. So let's talk about summer break. You know, a lot of parents come to us and they're very confused as to how to make you know a child's summer break the most productive you know period of the entire year, right? Because you're free for two months. You don't have school stress. You're trying to take different various classes. You might must be taking guitar classes, dance classes, or you know just anything that you come across, right? So one main point in terms of college admissions is make your summer productive, right? Don't like the slides says, don't let the summer slip away. Right, exactly. So 
So how, what do you say? How do we make a summer productive that helps you in your admissions, helps you later on in grade 12? Yes. Yeah, so again, you, you know, you can be strategic yeah. for it. So every summer you can plan different things, right? Obviously to show variety in your resume as well. So in a grade nine, a child can do a summer program, right? So obviously that gives them an added exposure to the universities abroad, gives them an indicator as to, hey, do I even like X college, right? Everyone thinks they like or dreams about getting into, but when they actually get there, they probably or don't maybe like just Jasper, exploring right? how US universities actually are correct. Yes. You know, how's the white culture at, you know, US or UK university, right? Yes. And then of course, I would say as you get to your latter years of your 10th, 11th, so many virtual internships exist now that's giving you real time opportunity as to how do corporates work. So whatever your intended major or area of study is, you should have a real world experience in that you know, field with a company as well, right? That always looks good. And if you can have your supervisor give you a letter of recommendation that we all know again, holds high, high uh, regards. And of course, one thing I like to add, there are a lot of competitive summer programs that give you college credit as well. Yes. Specifically in the US, you know, summer programs like the Stanford University Mathematics Camp, the Yale Select, Young yep. Scholars, uh, I think Columbia also has a very selective competitive one, yes. and selective summer program. So, there are, I think, nine to 10 competitive summer programs in the US that, first of all, give you an eight to 10 week experience of how a US university is, uh, looks like or feels like, how it is culturally, how do you fit in that university or in that environment. And it gives you college credits as well, right? Because these summer programs are recognized by universities when you're applying to them in your grade 12. So I think uh, applying to summer schools, working hard for them, and just cracking one of those. Uh, Competitive summer programs actually can give you a lot of edge over other students applying to the same university later. Uh, and yes, Mrs. Agarwal, you are absolutely right. The competitive ones are yeah. the one we recommend because that's the one you want to put on your resume, right? That you had to earn your way yeah. there. So like I said, there are nine to 10 very competitive summer programs. The rest of them are more like an experience or a, you know, a holiday sort of a vacation thing where you just you know give some money and attend that summer school they give you some value, but it's not competitive. So it won't be that beneficial on your profile when you're applying to those colleges. Yep. And also again, a uh, lot of kids don't take the SAT and ACT and wait till grade 12. Yeah. Is, we see that time and again. So again, our advice is as soon as you get done with 10, you are starting the 11th grade, get the SAT or the ACT out of the way so that you don't have to worry about it. Right. So again, that's how you could leverage again. Your grade 11 yeah, so just to you know summarize the summer break make it productive right <laughs> just do yes. different things do Correct. something that in different i mean just something that aligns with your story or the uh, you know the subject area or the major you're going for do something in that do various things along those lines so that you have a good story to tell when you're writing your essays in grade 12 right they want to know where you're coming from what was the context? What was the story behind it? So summer having a great productive summer helps you do that. Yeah. All right. Uh, so now, of course, you know, is, can we go ahead? Is that, is that the whole slide or? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so obviously, you know, our objective, right? With our junior academy, specifically Athena, is to create, you know, the leaders of tomorrow, right? So of course, how do we do that is by one offering them holistic development, right? So a lot of our academies that we run for our class nine and 10 students, it's to help them obtain these softer skills, right? Which again, colleges also, at least some of them do prepare you well. Uh, of course, deep subject specific knowledge, which we talked about, they should have academic exploration, exploration in the earlier years that they have. Also, yes, cross disciplinary exploration is very important. Yeah. How does, you know, CS go together with music? How do you tell storytelling through photography? So you have these different disciplines that are combined to be able to leverage into something productive. Yeah, time. this reminds you of how MIT and Caltech have started working, right? So in MIT and Caltech being one of the top technical CS colleges, they require not just one, two letters of recommendation mm -hmm. and one by someone, you know, a STEM teacher, but one by a humanities teacher or someone from the humanities department, right? So they want you to explore different sides of, um, you know, your application, your yourself, basically, right? If you're good at CS, how can you, you know, 
combine humanities side to CS or vice versa, right? If you're good at humanities, how do you explore your technical side? So that's why, you know, cross discipline like science side, exploration is super important, especially at a young age, right? You can develop interest in that and start building upon that. Yeah, and of course, the second pillar that comes out of the academy, of course, is actually the profile that we're talking about here today, right? The more you have on your profile, the more you'll be able to stand out in front of admissions officers. Mm -hmm. So, of course, at the end of these academies, you'll be having tangible deliverables, right? A blog that you can showcase or a podcast that you've done, right? Or some other kind of certificate that you've got in data science that you can showcase, right? That I'm qualified as a data scientist at a certain proficiency. So, again, these are things that come out of the academies that we help our kids run. Don't think we, we can't, we don't need we can go to the next. Uh, yes, and of course, uh, this is a taste of just what a typical month at Athena looks like for a student. You have five different courses to choose from. So, of course, these are monthly courses. So, there are five courses rolled out each month. Uh, and of course, the good part is you can obviously on a rotation basis get to uh, choose more, but this is again giving you a taste of college, right? You're not going to be able to choose every class every semester. So you choose one to begin with and you work your way through the rest of the curriculum, right? So of course, I myself teach the second one, which is the business of sports. And you know, what does it take to be a sports owner, uh, which again helps them understand the world of sports. And the final assignment is them preparing a pitch deck, understanding how valuations of businesses work as well as them being able to do a presentation at the end to our founders, Rahul and Poshak. So that teaches them public speaking skills as well, which is again a soft skill, which is very underrated in today's world. Right? I think that's all we had in terms of slides, but yes, we're more than happy to yeah. now uh, take questions and go into Q&A. Or at least if uh, you guys, do you want to introduce yourselves, uh, where you're from, which grade your child is in, what you're trying to seek from today? Yeah. Hi. Uh, so first, uh, my wife just introduced uh, uh, My name is Vishal Garg. We live in New Jersey. Uh, your reference can be a friend, of course, who I you guys helped him out. Um, we are looking, uh, our daughter is a 10th grader here in New Jersey. We are looking uh, to see some counseling and help, um, some sort of guidance. So so maybe help me understand, I'm sure your clientele is pretty much um, majority focused, kids coming from India to US, but do you help kids who are in US and what kind of help do you provide those kids who are uh, graduating from U.S. high schools and applying to either U.S. colleges or U.K. colleges? Thank you. Absolutely. And uh, yes, uh, who was the reference, sorry, Mr. Garg, that you got through, uh, came through? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it later. Will that okay. Be okay. I just, if we already knew that would be like a good starting point itself, because if, this, if they were from America, then that's easier, right? Uh, but yes, we do have a lot of clients in the U.S., right? As Chaitanya mentioned, we have clients in actually 13 countries. But yes, the U.S. is our biggest clientele outside of India, right? So we have catered to a lot of students specifically on the East Coast, West Coast, and Texas. I would say these are three different regions where most of our kids in the U.S. are based. And yes, so obviously, you know, we understand the nuances of that. And at the end of the day, it's the same thing, right? They're applying to the same colleges. So, of course, there is some nuances with the scoring of what you want to do in schools and the opportunities that you have in a high school, right? Uh, but yes, uh, we have helped students from the U.S. get into all the great universities, right? In fact, we had Umana Sharma last year get into Princeton as well. He was from, Dan from Dallas. He got into MIT. MIT as well, but he chose, oh, he chose MIT over Princeton, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, yes, Mr. Gag, that's not a problem at all. Thank you. Uh, hi, um, Jasmine, and um, I'm Ria Berner's mom. Uh, we live in Australia. 
Melbourne <laughs> and uh, <laughs> And, um, I actually yeah. studied in Australia. Chaitanya here yeah, studied in Australia. Yeah. Yes, I was oh, in Brisbane nice. for four years. Yeah. Oh, excellent, excellent. Yes. Um, so, um, you know, we're, we're looking forward to, we're going to be in Bombay in December. So, we're looking forward okay. to catching up then. And uh, we just did a round trip um, to the States and looked at different colleges. We're quite right. specific with where we want to go, what we want to do. Right. And um, looking forward to, to, yeah, a bit of a targeted approach. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, so, Mr. Jasmine, yes, we do have now offices in Bangalore and Mumbai as well. So, yes, please do drop by our office in Mumbai. It's at the Quorum in Lower Parade. So, we'll be more than happy to, you know, uh, host you in the office yes. there as well. No, looking forward to that. And, uh, set, um, you know, had great feedback from... Um, um, Companies and, and a few other okay, friends. Okay, great. Yes, Shiv. Yes. 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 Uh, they're looking forward. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's headed to Colombia. So yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So um, yeah. yeah. So our daughter is uh, just in year ten at the moment, but we're just you know putting things in place. So just to understand them and uh, uh, you know, like I I think for a lot of us, colonial complexity that we suffer from. You know, a lot yes. of us understand the other side of, of, of the application. The US seems to be a bit more, uh, I, I think uh, most child most children can probably be CEOs and future CEOs of companies already, considering what they, they have to put on their CVs, right? Yes. So that's the idea we want to build tomorrow's leaders. That's the mission statement. <laughs> yes. So no, just looking forward. And I think like what Vishal was saying, I think, um, uh, for, for us as well, it's just, you know, we're out of India, just understanding mm. that as long as um, we understand that Athena understands the different curriculum of schools, I think yes, yeah. that 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 would give us comfort. Absolutely, and, definitely, right? We have so many clients from, like like Sayed said, US, Dubai, from Singapore, from various other countries, right? And they're all Indian Americans, Indian Emiratis, X, Y, Z. So, you know, we yeah. understand where you come from culturally and how to use that to our advantage, being an Indian living outside or being born outside, how do we use it? How do we connect to our roots, just applying to U.S. colleges? How does a U.S. college look at a student like that who's not born in the U.S. or is in the U.S. but has family in India? Stuff like that. So we are all aware of that, about all the nuances of different applicants. So that'll all be taken care of. You don't have to worry about it. And also, yes. I think from our perspective, is that because we're not doing IB, we're not doing A level. Yeah, that's so, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just, just those little nuances, and yeah. I think, um, yeah, that that's all from our side. Yeah, no, I mean, we would love to put a pin in Australia as well. So yes, this is one of that would be awesome if we can obviously have you know yeah. Australia. As no, well. no, looking forward to it, and and you know, um, more than happy to be your little mascot here once we get through. <laughs> Absolutely. And which city were you in again uh, in Australia? We're in Melbourne. Melbourne, okay, great. Awesome. Uh, yeah, Melbourne in Victoria. Uh, Ria just uh, did the SAT and paper, so we were very... With SAT and paper, I think. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, she got, we were very happy with the support we got, and I think it just shows that, you know, uh, India is just... The services that is provided... Exactly, right? The virtual model exactly. works. That's yeah, and, and, uh, <laughs> correct. And and we've been like, you know, uh, just I, I've been sending a lot of I, I'm from Malaysia originally. And okay. and I just think uh, this is a great opportunity for everybody to, to collaborate. And um, so this is just great. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's great to have a. Uh, more people from different yeah, areas. and I'll get in touch. We're going to be then um, a third, uh, second week of December, and I'll, I'll send you an email separately. Thank you. Got it. We'll, we'll definitely sure. be in touch. Hey guys, this is Manshi. Quick question for you. So, what's the next steps? I, I do need to understand what you guys bring to the table for Sarah. She's, as Vishal mentioned, she's a tenth grader. She's a sophomore here. Yeah. Um, she's an APS student, so I'm not worried from an academic perspective. She do have already started a nonprofit. She has good extracurricular activities. I just need to see uh, yeah. without wasting your time and our time to see what kind of assistance she can grab sure. and uh, what you guys bring to the table for her. So yes, how, how do I reach out? I already, as Vishal mentioned, we got the contact for you guys from a friend. I don't know if she hired you guys or not, 
uh, okay. but she did have a conversation with Rahul. I do have his phone number, so I need to understand who do I need to reach out to. Um, so I understand what's next. Yeah, got it, ma'am. So we definitely have your details as well. We'll be in touch after the session. We'll send you an application form or an interview link. Then we can connect one on one and you know just answer all your questions, micro questions, individual questions, and how we can help you. Yeah. So and the next steps are we send you an application form. Please fill that out, and we will have a one on one session with you. And that's where we can specifically look at your child's resume and talk about what specifically. and where we can help okay great thanks hi uh, my name is deshma um yes. i live in new jersey and i have attended two more of your webinars so okay. um i actually work in a school district in new jersey i am a data analyst and um it's a very high achieving school district so not everyone who has the perfect sat or grades gets into universities um even people who score, score less or have lower grades get into great universities yep that's what chaitanya so, mentioned earlier so yeah so like you mentioned right a school like harvard they reject like 1000 kids every year more than 1000 actually who get a 1600 sat score so it's not about all about your academics and grades but they are the most basic thing that needs to be covered like i said you don't need to have perfect scores right but you need to be in that top band so that universities can compare you across all uh, different parameters equally right once you have those grades the sat score they can move past and then look at your extra curriculars and see okay now everyone has the same grades how are you different from the um, next person who's applying your classmate who's applying right if you both have the same grades how do you differentiate that's where extra curriculars your essays Letter recommendations and your entire profile comes into play. Ah, uh, but yes, I think. So like I said, something. like, like I said, like we come from a very high achieving school district, and almost every student over here, if you see, is like into extracurriculars. They are either in a club or in a sport, or they are like doing fundraisers. They have everything great on their application. Like I, I have the data to back up what I'm saying, but it's not that everyone gets in. you can see students who had the perfect sats perfect as and they and they had the highest ap courses like some had 10 13 and then and they had the extracurriculars and they didn't even get into a single id and then uh-huh. see, yes, yes that's how competitive ivs are the acceptance rates are less than 5% that's on ivs right so yes that's yeah, that's but, the world would have been correct but a student with a 1400 score and a few b's here and there and a few extra curriculars they they get in so like i say that you are very focused on the grades the sats it's like but it still doesn't address this question like where this discrepancy is there you know and if the students are all from this great schools great districts how is it that you stand out because almost everyone is doing the same thing that you guys are talking about no so that is where you stand out right that is where your capstone project has to stand out from the rest right uh, say for example you're an olympic level swimmer which college isn't going to take you right then you're a one so harvard has released certain metrics on how they assess candidates so they're not going to reject an olympic level swimmer right so that's how you stand out right obviously from one standpoint then another way we can stand out is the capstone project that you've done say you've done uh, you know like mehul who went to stanford his app was downloaded 1000 times and he taught english to underprivileged kids through his app right so you're hitting all three pillars of impact uh, of course then the interest area that you had which is cs and also you know using technology as well to build something because you want to study cs so you have to align your profile correctly to what you want to study right that's where we help you tie in your story and all that comes out through the essay that you write only if you've done substantial stuff in the years that you've had from 9 to 12 will you then be able to write you know a beautiful common app essay summarizing your story to these aos all right thank you yep I see, Mr. Rasik, uh, Mr. Bahadur, you're on as well. He's on. 
okay maybe this is another classic bahadur but we do have someone from dubai there okay anyone else with uh, questions but yes uh, before you do leave please do fill out the uh, feedback form if you can in the chat box uh, that would be very beneficial for us to understand uh, what you thought of the session and whether you know what all we can uh, improve upon guys uh, is it possible to schedule a 30 minute one on one call um, maybe sometime later this week or whenever you have your available please yeah absolutely that is the next yes, step we'll someone okay. from the team will be in touch with you and you can schedule one on one thank you uh, i got a drop uh, but we'll be in touch sure. absolutely thank you. have a good yeah. day thank you for joining yeah great anybody else with any uh, last minute questions no i guess we did a great job then awesome thank you guys Hey, hey, hey. Okay. Yeah. So basically, I'm a student from Eleven Delhi, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm just planning to uh, move abroad um, in eleventh for my further studies. So can you please guide me with all the process? Anyone take this one? Sure. So you're moving abroad in grade eleven. Yeah, I'm planning to move uh, for my further studies. Got it. So, have you applied to any schools? Like, what school are you targeting? UW. Yeah, I am looking for uh, Southwest Bank London School, uh, Southwest Bank in London, and uh, I'm applying to. I'm planning for London or probably Canada. These two. Got it. So, uh, we have had uh, students before applying to you know boarding schools abroad. In Because area. I've heard that uh, moving in eleventh has you know further benefit for uh, getting in a better college. So yeah, if you can, you know, it's all about utilizing the resources that you are given within grade eleventh and twelfth. So, of course, in moving to London, you're applying to UK University. You'll have a better chance of getting into, let's say, Oxford, Cambridge, London School of Economics, if you utilize the resources well. Mm. But you know, like I said, if you've studied in India as well and you excel at all academic extracurriculars, it's almost the same, right? It's not. I'm so not that of... that good at academics, but I'm a national level swimmer. Got it. So for sure, you know, if you get into your London schools uh, swim team and you play nationals there as well, so you might be able to go the sports route to another top college in the UK, or for that matter, if you know, get going. I was certain kind of in touch business as well, and I've even pitched my startup to some kind of investors. Got it. So yeah, you know, but like we said, UK is all about academics more. But if you have a sports angle to it, it's always helpful. So you know, you'll have to. F you we can you know get on a chat after this yeah. call or in the coming. Yes, I'm basically looking for some kind of career counseling. So can I have a personal one? Yeah. So we can definitely we'll send you our details. We have yours. So we'll you know connect with you later this week or tomorrow, whichever time suits. And which school were you in, Samir? I'm um, Mod Knight. Oh, so am I. Which one? Uh, Barakam Road. Okay, I went to Vasant Vihar back in the day. Nice. I was early in in Jiri Wanga Vasant Kunj, but I changed it recently. Okay, smart choice. Ah. Uh, All right. Anybody else? No, I think we're good then. Thank you all for joining. If you haven't filled out the feedback form, please do so in the chat box, and we hope to uh, get in touch with.